What's up guys, I'm Celis Williams, aka The School Professor, here to educate you on health and social well-being. You guys just saw clips from yesterday's workout, which was Wednesday, my secondary um, deadlift focus day, and Sumos felt great. Those of you who've been keeping up with uh, the channel recently, like especially like these redemption episodes, know that I only switched to Sumo as my account-specific lift uh, at like pretty much the beginning of this prep, we were like 12 weeks out. Even though I was still doing Sumo every now and then on my secondary pool days, um, this is the like you know the only time I've ever like had as my primary pool since like 2016. Because like in 2016 I switched to conventional and kept going um, with that just because I had to, due to the stuff going off my hips I had to stop sumo. But with that being said, it feels so good right now. Like I'm like I'm really happy with the progress that I've made in just a few weeks as far as like my form positioning. The hardest part for me, as I've kind of mentioned in videos briefly before, is that. I want to make sure I'm actively like, you know, pulling the slack out and getting in good position, but still able to like press into the ground and drive through aggressively. And I've tried different things like, you know, like kind of grabs to get the slack out with one hand and the other hand. Um, I've tried things where I kind of like just try to get down there, get the slack out and drive through immediately. Uh, I've tried other things where I like just go really nice and slow, get the slack out and then I wedge in nice and slow and try to press through the ground. But I finally found like that perfect balance for me where I just, I go down, I pull, I grab the bar with both hands. I, you know, raise my, do the hip shoot to get the slack out immediately, like like pull it out, but I make sure that like, I kind of hold it for a second so I can make sure I've got it completely out. And then I drive my hips through aggressively from that point without like, you know, trying to do it so fast to ride losing the slack. And it just, it just feels really good. So I'm really happy with that. Um, today I'm gonna be taking you guys through my Thursday workouts, my church area uh, workout. It looks very similar to how I did last block. The only difference is on last block, I had sleeveless tempo squats followed by uh, just sleeveless competition squats for my back downs. And then, you know, I had a tempo bench top single and then normal comp bench back downs. Well, it's the same thing as far as the tempos, but now I have my sleeves back on for my squats for both the top set and the back down, simply due to the fact that we are now like, we're like three, no, less than three weeks out. So had to be as comp specific as possible. So just want to show you guys this day so you can kind of like, you know, the brief difference in the loads I was moving um, sleeveless on this day for my tempo single versus what I'm moving now in sleeves. I want to say the heaviest I got up to was like 363, 364 sleeveless. So last week I hit 375 in sleeves for week one, but that was because I misread the tempo. I thought it was supposed to be three seconds on the way down and then uh, like, you know, like two to three second tempo on the way back up, but it's really just three seconds on the way down and just explode back up just like what it was when it was sleepless. So we'll see what I get up to today. Just kind of show you guys that comparison. And then after that, I think I'll, show, I'll probably show you guys uh, one more secondary bench and squat day because before the secondary squat days were pause squats and they were that for the first two weeks of this block, but now they're going back to full on comp squats for the secondary day. So I'll show you guys what kind of what I'm getting up to on that. I'll probably show you guys at least one more secondary pool day. And then I'll definitely obviously be showing you guys the last full SVD session. That's a week from my meet. So you guys can see like the heaviest weights that I'm touching during this prep before we actually like go into the meet. And then that'll probably be it. So we'll probably get about like, you know, two, maybe three more episodes after this before like the actual like meet day uh, happens. So I'm, I'm just really excited for that. But anyway, yeah, let's, Let's get to the gym, let's get in this work, you already know what it is. So my buildups are feeling really, really good right now. I'm about to do my top set. Now, as a quick reminder for those of you who didn't, like, haven't seen what this dance current setup is like, the way it works is that it's the same every single week as far as the top set. It's always a single at RP6 with the tempo. Now, my back down sets do go up from week to week, but by very small percentages, and they're never more than 70%. Like on this day, the church area day, which is the third squat day of the week, my volume work is always anywhere between 60 to 70%. It usually starts around 60, and then we'll end around like, you know, 66, 68. In some cases, when I'm closer to a meet, maybe 70%. Now, 
The reason that we have it as a tempo and on top of an RP6 is because the purpose of this day is just grooving really, really good position. We still want to get something relatively heavy on my back, um, but even though it's only like an RP6, the fact is because it's the third squat day of the week, any weight that I put on here is going to feel a little bit heavier than what it would otherwise on my primary or secondary day. So. When you add that with the fact that it's at RP6 and a tempo, it still lets me get something pretty heavy on my back, but it's something where I'm just focused purely on position, a smooth transition into the hole and a smooth transition back up into the lockout. I'm not really focused on being overly explosive or speed. It's all about just maintaining um, tension and position. So similar to a pause squat, you know, we're working on maintaining tension position as well, but with those, you guys know, I usually progress to pause squats either by RP each week or by decreasing the rep range each week, so that way the intensity goes up because we can't overload pause squats quite a bit compared to tempo squat. For those of you who want a full breakdown, who want a full breakdown of the difference between how I program pause squats versus tempo squats, I'll have the link to that video in the description down below. simply because this time I knew there was no tempo coming back up. Granted, because I'm doing a tempo going down, I'm still not gonna be able to be quite as fast coming out of the hole, but I still moved it a lot faster than what I, what I did last week when I was trying to do like a tempo coming back up like at a one, two pace, so felt really good. Now I've got my back downs. Once again, my back downs are just normal comp squats, but even though they're comp squats, because the load is so light, like I said, it's only, I think today's only like 62, 64%, something like that, I can still focus on this really, really good movement pattern. The way I move today has a huge impact on how I'm gonna move on my primary day. On my primary day, I'm not overly focused on technique. I'm trying to move the loads as fast as I can. So I wanna ingrain those proper movement patterns on all my other days, especially this day. Um, so yeah, gonna knock out those back down sets on squats and then get to bench. So I'm done with squats. I actually have to wait for a bench to be available to put on the rack to bench press. So while it's going on, I want to tell you guys about something really quick that I feel is very important. And I've touched on this um, in past videos before in different formats, so I'm going to be very straightforward. And that's finding a balance, guys. So most people would associate me as someone who's, um, you know, I try to base my training off scientific principles. I'm very um, evidence-based. Like, you know, I'm part of like, like the evidence-based fitness community. I like to do my research into things, know the why behind what I'm doing and be able to explain it to you guys. So that way, it's not it's not a matter of, oh, you're doing what I say because my physique is good, or you're doing what I say because, oh, he can lift this much weight. You're, you're doing what I say because I can explain to you why it fundamentally makes sense. Now, I do think that's important to do, but a huge issue is like these two extremes that the fitness community seems to kind of be split apart in. One, are those of you where you can't make a single move without a study and and that's a really really big mistake meaning like you guys can understand maybe you understand the basic principles of progressive overload calories and risk you understand these things you know these things to be true these are time tested proven methods that are like factually proven 100 percent no doubt these methods work yet you guys will see one like inconclusive study just one inconclusive study and it'll make you question everything you know or it'll make you want to change up your entire programming it's like deal with what I've brought up before, like, you know, um, um, paralysis by analysis. You just keep reading and researching so much to where you're not actually able to take anything and apply it practically. Or a lot of you aren't even able to properly read research. So you read it and, and you think you understand what it's telling you to do and you try to apply it and then you find out that, oh, it's a lot harder to do this when I'm not in a controlled environment like a lab where all my variables are exactly as they need to be. So there's that extreme, right? But what I want to touch on more so right now is the extreme, because I've been getting a lot of this, I've been getting a lot of new subs, is people going to like a lot of my older videos and being like, oh, well, I like doing this because I feel this works for me, or I do this because I know it works, I feel it working. You guys have to understand something. Your feelings do not negate 
facts. Your feelings do not negate science. And everybody always tries to come back with like, it's like, oh, well, there's more to it than just science. Like, 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 how does your science explain this or that? Like, guys, science is not made to like, like dismiss your feelings or like that, but science is there to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. It's not like it's a separate thing. It's not like there's, oh, there's non-science training and then there's science training. Science just explains training, period. But what you guys have to come to an understanding of is that placebo is a very real thing and guess what there's science and research showing that there is solid research showing us that placebo like how we think up here can have a certain um, effect on how we perform physically or even things that affect us physiologically and I'm talking about some mind over matter crap we're like I believe I can fly I'm gonna suddenly take off soaring but just things related to like um, how the body feels and performance aspects and, and force output things like that so it's kind of like I'll give you a perfect example like BCAAs all the research has shown us as far as meta-analysis that BCAAs, there's no point in supplementing it. That like, like for somebody where like, you know, you're getting a good amount of food intake, you're getting an adequate amount of protein, this, you get nothing from BCAAs because you already get everything you need from BCAAs with your protein. So if you're lacking in protein, it would make more sense to supplement protein before you supplement BCAAs. I'll link that video in the description down below too, why BCAAs are pointless, so the meta-analysis over it, all, all that. But I'll still have people arguing, saying like, but I know it's working, like, I feel it working. Listen, if you've already convinced yourself that this is going to do something for you, then I can believe that you feel it's doing something, but what am I going to look at? When I have research that shows that, hey, placebo, the way you think can affect how you feel, and then I also have research showing that BCAs absolutely do nothing for you when it comes to your strength training and your recovery, it's like, it's like to me, it makes a whole lot more sense for me to go based off, oh, then that's probably placebo, than to just be convinced that you're just that one rare exception that this science and research that these facts doesn't apply to. But it's finding that balance. It's like, you, it's all about being practical. Don't be these people, because there's two extremes, man. It's, and that's why in that whole video where I talked about why the whole natty verified, natty or nothing is stupid, it's because in the same way that you guys shouldn't be taking somebody's information on the basis of, oh, look how jacked this person looks, look how strong he is. Don't take someone's information just on the basis of, oh, they have a PhD or, oh, they use the word science. Like, yeah, like, I use the word science, you know, and research in my content, yes. I like what do I always say guys, simple, specific, scientific. Simple is the first thing. I can use a bunch of fancy terminology all day, but if I can't break down the information in a way that is easy for my audience to understand, then it's pointless, it's worthless. Specific, meaning that just because something is evidence-based doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to apply to you, because you need to make sure that what you're looking at is going to be specific to your situation. And then scientific in the sense of, yeah, if we have research that shows beyond the shadow of the doubt that this works or shows beyond the shadow of the doubt that this doesn't work, then we can't ignore that just because of our feelings. But at the same time, it needs to be stuff you can practically apply. Because if you can't practically apply it, then what good is it? So, like I always tell you guys, information may value by the information itself. Can you understand this and apply it to your training in a way that is beneficial to you? It's got to go beyond the fancy degrees, the titles, the oh, he's my favorite YouTuber because he looks like this or he's this strong or I love his smile. Like, that's got to stop. Because at the end of the day, like I said, there's always going to be people out there who will take advantage of you regardless if they're natural or not natural. So it's on you as a consumer to educate yourself. It's easy to be like, oh, well, some people are just naive. But exactly, some people are naive. So take the time to educate yourself so you can help educate others. You can't let ignorance be an excuse because it's 2019. We have information out there and available for you. You just got to use it. So we are back at the crib. I kid you not, by the time I finished recording, like the segment where I was just talking to you guys about like, you know, research versus how you feel versus practicality, I still wait another 35, 40 minutes before I actually got to bench. So by the time I got to the bench, I didn't really feel much like talking to you guys. Plus at that point, you know, it was like maybe like close to like seven or eight o'clock. So the gym was getting really, really crowded. So didn't really feel like talking. Didn't have a whole lot of time trying to set my camera to record the accessories. Plus I'm gonna be honest with you guys, man, unless I'm working out with like somebody else or I'm just feeling it, like just feel like, like taking my shirt off and just like showing off the pump. I recording the accessory work is very boring unless it's something that like you guys haven't seen before or I have an informative reason for showing you guys. So don't be expecting to see like just a whole bunch of that, for, you know, at least until after 
uh, this prep's done because I'm just trying to keep things focused on what actually matters leading up into this meet as far as what I show you guys. But anyway, yeah, I still got all my accessory work in, including the calves, still in calves every single session. That has not changed. I'll probably actually be giving you guys an update as far as like um, what I've been doing to kind of change things around. You guys know when I originally started, and I think it's been a little bit over a month now actually because I started April 25th. So yeah, it's been over a month at this point. Um, but I've gone from just doing like, you know, it would, it would always alternate from like, you know, five straight sets of 12 on standing or five sets of 12 on seated, just gradually adding load. I've kind of changed things up in order to like keep the progression going. I'll probably give you guys like an update with that at some other point in time. But point is, bench felt really, really good. My top set felt great. As you guys saw, I worked up to a top set uh, of one RP7 tempo single with 304 pounds, which beats what I did last week because last week was just RP6, so that's 298 pounds. So I only bumped it up like by a little bit just because even though the rp is going up i know that with that tempo being there i'm not going to add like just crazy amounts of weight but it flew it felt good actually i can honestly say that both my top set of um bench and squat felt better than last week so it's just really good to know that like my technical proficiency on everything is feeling really really excellent right now like like my setup on the bench and my ability just to have maintain scapular control retract on the way down feels great um my internal rotation on my squats to where like I'm not having to like over externally rotate and just push my knees out to hit depth anymore. I can like kind of have my knees going forward and still hit depth, but have that good quad drive due to that um, internal rotation just feels amazing. Deadlifts, I already talked to you guys about how deadlifts are feeling great, but what really matters is how everything's going to move on Saturday, which is when I'll be talking to you guys next. So I will see you Saturday for my SBE session. All right, what's up guys? So originally my plan was just to show you my top sets from this SVD session, close the video out, and then send you all on your way. However, I actually forgot to close the video out. A lot was going on um, during this training session. Um, my client and friend Michael was actually in Sweden at the same time of this session, killing it at Worlds, placing first, which super proud of him for that. And then this day in general was just, just really long because there's a lot going on. But it's all good because it gives me an opportunity to kind of play these back down clips as well because i just wanted you guys to see how like literally other than having one less set uh back down set on deadlifts the total volume of what i had to do was pretty much the exact same as last week in terms of like you know total sets and reps but everything was heavier but despite that everything felt so much better than last week so it's just really nice to know that this style of peaking is going really well for me as far as like, you know, just building into it. It's so nice once again, to be able to handle all this workload and to be acclimating it. Cause I literally felt like <laughs> I was like gonna pass out last week from just all the set volume. But this time around, everything felt really good. And I'm just really happy with my position on everything, especially on my top sets. I don't think my form has ever looked this good this many weeks out from a meet with such heavy loads. So honestly, I have nothing I complain about. We're two weeks out and I'm excited to see exactly what I'm gonna be able to do once we get on the platform. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I know I keep saying that I don't plan on doing like voiceovers with these redemption episodes, but it kinda just seems like, you know, it's gonna happen from time to time. But it is what it is. I know you guys ain't tripping over it too badly. Anyway, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go in the comment down below, let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below, let me know where I can get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific, and I'll catch you guys later.